Hello everyone and welcome back. From this session we are beginning our new chapter Instructions of 8085 Microprocessor Part 1. Till the previous session we learnt about the fundamentals of 8085 Microprocessor. Now before we move ahead and learn about the instructions of the 8085 Microprocessor it was required to understand the basic organization and the components within the 8085 Microprocessor. So from this session onwards, we are going to begin this new chapter and today we are going to learn about the instructions of 8085 microprocessor. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we are going to learn about the different groups of instructions of 8085 microprocessor. Thereafter we will learn about the classification based on the different groups and finally we will learn the classification based on different sizes. In these two, we are basically talking about the different instructions and the classifications of those we will see. So let's begin with the groups of instructions of 8085 microprocessor. Now if you remember, in the previous chapter, when we were learning about the program counter register, we created a program so that we can perform the two's complement of any value. Now, this was our program, right? Let's now take a moment to analyze all the instruction in this program. Now, if you notice carefully, in this program, we have included 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. That is, 5 different instructions. Now, are they all of the same type? Well, not really. Focus on the first instruction. It is LDA F840. Basically, we are going to load the accumulator with the data which is stored inside this particular memory location. So this is a data transfer instruction. Coming to the second instruction, it is CMA. It stands for complement the content of the accumulator. Now think about it. Complementation is a logical function. In other words, if we send the content within the accumulator, through NOT get, the output will be the complement of the content within the accumulator. So this instruction is actually a logical instruction. Let's focus on the next instruction, INRA. Basically, with the content of the accumulator, we are going to add one. In other words, we are going to increment the contents within the accumulator. So clearly, addition will be performed. Therefore, this particular instruction is an arithmetic instruction. Coming to the next instruction, STA F850. Clearly, to a particular memory location, we are going to store the content within the accumulator register. So here also, data is being transferred from the accumulator to a particular memory location. So this instruction will also fall under the category data transfer instruction. And finally, we have got the HALT, that is HLT instruction. Now, what is the purpose of this instruction? If you remember, I told you, seeing this instruction, the 8085 microprocessor will HALT or stop the execution of the program. That is, seeing this, it knows this is the end point of the program. So this instruction doesn't really fall under any of these categories. So clearly, this is a different type of instruction, which happens to be the machine control instruction. So notice one thing, when we wrote this program, we used different types of instructions. That means, in 8085 microprocessor, there are different groups of instructions, right? And before we start writing programs, we need to understand and learn all the different groups of instructions. So that was all about the understanding of groups of instructions of H085 microprocessor. Let's now learn about the classification based on different groups. Now in case of H085, there are seven groups of instructions. Let me note down the groups at first. Some of the groups we already have seen. So first we will have the data transfer instructions. Then we will have arithmetic instructions. 
Thereafter comes the logical instructions. Now from these three, we already have used a few. But apart from these, there are a few more groups, which are stack instructions, branch instructions, input-output instructions, and interrupt instructions. Now you might be wondering, we didn't really enlist the machine control instructions. Well, let me tell you the reason for that. There are only a few machine control instructions, and based on their functionalities, they are distributed in these groups. If we talk about the one that we have seen so far, HLT or HALT, the purpose of the instruction HALT is to let the microprocessor know to HALT for the time being. And that instruction we will study when we will learn about the interrupt instructions. So how many groups are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, like I mentioned earlier. Now, these are the groups. In each group, there are different types. And in different instruction types, we have different opcodes. Now, if we talk about the data transfer instructions, there are 13 different instruction types. And in 13, we have got cumulatively 83 opcodes. Confused? Let me explain what do I mean by the instruction types and the different number of opcodes. Say we have got an instruction which helps us move the content from one register to another register. We will learn about them in details in upcoming sessions, but for now, let me take the example. Say we have got an instruction MOV R1, R2. That is, we would like to move the content from the register R2 within the register R1. So this is one type of instruction. But if we consider all the GPRs, think about it. MOV B, C will have one opcode, but MOV C, B will have a different opcode. However, the type is same. We are trying to move some data from one GPR to another GPR. That is, from one general purpose register to another general purpose register. But when it comes to opcode, it should be specific. That's why there can be less number of instruction types, but more number of opcodes. I hope it is clear to you. Let's now move on to the next group, that is arithmetic group of instructions. Here, there are 14 different types and cumulatively 62 different opcodes. Then in case of logical instructions, there are 15 different types and 43 opcodes. Coming to stack instructions, in 8085, there are 9 instruction types and in these 9 different types, it has 15 different opcodes. For branch instructions, there are 8 types, but coming to the number of opcodes, it is 36. Now, in case of I.O. instructions, that is the input-output instructions, the number of instruction type is 2, also the number of opcode is 2. This means, for one type, there is one opcode. And it is also the same for interrupt instructions, there are 5 instruction types and 5 opcodes. Let's now calculate the total number of instruction types and total number of opcodes. If we add all these, there are 66 different types. And in 8085, there are 246 opcodes. And all these 246 opcodes pertains to all these 7 different groups. Now from these groups, in this chapter we are going to cover the data transfer instructions, arithmetic instructions and logical instructions. In the later chapters, we will learn about these groups. So this is the classification based on different groups. Now notice another thing, we have got 246 opcodes, right? So the question is, how did Intel come up with this particular number? Now if you remember, when we loaded our previous program within the memory, it looked something like this. And I hope you remember, the associated memory of the 8085 microprocessor has 8-bit cells. That is, 
in all these locations it can only store 8 bits so 40f8 50f8 these are all 8 bits because these are two digit hexadecimal numbers now what about lda cma inra sta and hlt since the memory locations are of 8 bits so these are also of 8 bits now with 8 bits we can have 2 raised to the power 8 number of instructions that is 256 instructions and from those 256 instructions intel has only 246 instructions so the range of opcodes that we will have is from 00 to ff now why is this observe two digit hexadecimal that means four zeros followed by four zeros that is one byte so this is the first number in the 8 bit range and what about ff four ones followed by four ones that is eight ones in one byte so clearly this is the last number in the range now you must be wondering we were storing LDA, CMA, INRA, STA, HLT, the instructions like these. Then what on earth are the opcodes in hexadecimal? <laughs> well, let me clarify. Within the memory, the program is not saved like this. It is saved like this. That is, instead of LDA, we save the opcode of it, that is 3A then CMA is not saved as CMA, it is loaded as 2F. INRA is stored as 3C, STA is stored as 32, and HLT is stored as 76. Now you might be confused, sometimes we are talking about instructions, sometimes we are talking about mnemonics, and some of the times we are talking about hexadecimal values. So the question is, which is which? Which is the opcode? What is the instruction? And what is in reality the mnemonic? Let me clarify that to you. Let's consider the very first instruction that is LDA F840. Now this in its entirety is called the instruction. Now the first portion of the instruction that is LDA, these letters specifies what the microprocessor is supposed to do. Here, LDA stands for load the accumulator with the content stored in this particular location. So this is helping us remember what is the microprocessor is supposed to do. Words like this, which actually help us, the human beings, remember something, are known as mnemonic. That is, some element which helps us remember something. Now, this mnemonic, when it is converted to its equivalent hexadecimal, this is what we call the opcode. Now, let me tell you why these are called opcodes. Well, opcode is a short form, which actually means operation code. Try to understand this. With this hexadecimal code, we the users giving the instruction to the 8085 microprocessor that you are supposed to perform the operation load accumulator. So clearly, this is a code which pertains to a specific operation. And that's the reason why we call these the opcodes. So remember, this entire thing is the instruction, the portion which helps us, the human beings, remember what the microprocessor is supposed to perform is called the mnemonic and the hexadecimal equivalent of that is known as the opcode. So that was all about the classification based on the different groups. Let's now learn about the classification based on different sizes. We will take the example of the same program which we stored inside our memory. Let's now observe how it was stored inside the memory. The first instruction of the program, that is LDA F840, was stored something like this. Now, if you notice, the address F840 was stored in byte reversal order. 
Let me tell you the reason behind this. Specifically in case of Intel, it prefers to store the addresses in little endian method. That is, at first, the lower order byte of the address will be stored and thereafter the higher order byte of the address will be stored. But remember, that's not always the case for all the different microprocessors. The contemporary microprocessor manufacturer Motorola prefers the big endian way. That is, in case of Motorola, while storing the addresses within the memory, the higher order byte is stored at first, thereafter the lower order byte is stored. Since we are learning about 8085 microprocessor, that's why this method is followed and this is called the little endian method. If you notice, the name is also justified because the little end or the lower order byte is stored at first. So clearly, the instruction LDAF840 will be stored inside the memory like this. First, we will store LDA, thereafter the little end or the lower order byte, and finally, the big end or the higher order byte. Now, this entire instruction, as you can see, is occupying three bytes of memory space. Coming to the next instruction, CMA, it is of one byte. And the same we can say for INRA, it is also occupying only one byte. However, the instruction STA50F8, remember, here also we are storing the address. So the lower order byte is stored at first. Then we stored the higher order byte. So it is actually STAF850. But due to the way Intel specifies the storage of address within the memory space is like this. Anyway, this is also of 3 bytes. Then again, HALT is of 1 byte. So clearly, in 8085, we have got instructions which are of different sizes. Now, there are instructions of basically 3 sizes. At first, we have the instructions which are one byte long. Then we have got the instructions which are two bytes long. And finally, the instructions which are three bytes long. Now, let me tell you about a notation which we will be using very frequently in our course of microprocessor and microcontrollers. As you can see, we have written one byte and within parenthesis, we have written S. And we followed the same for these two as well. Now, this is done to remove the confusion that what to use, bytes or byte? Well, in general, when it is one, it should be byte. But when it is two and three, it should be bytes. So, in order to remove the confusion, we are going to use it like this so that we can call it either byte or bytes as our convenience. Anyway, let's get back to our classification. So there are 202 instructions, which are one byte long. Coming to the instructions, which are two byte long, there are 18 of them. And finally, the instructions, which are three byte long, there are 26 of them. Notice 202 plus 18, that is 220, plus 26 is 246. So altogether, there are 246 opcodes in Intel Edge Rate 5. So this is all about the classification based on the different sizes. From the next session onwards, we will begin the data transfer group of instructions and we are going to learn the instructions based on their types. Basically, we will talk about the types and thereafter within the types, we will talk about the different opcodes in it. So in this session, we covered the topics. First, we understood that there are different groups of instructions in 8085 microprocessor. Thereafter, we learned the classification based on the different groups. And finally, we also learned the classification based on different sizes. All right, people, that will be all for this session. From the next session onwards, we are going to learn about different data transfer instructions. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.